Hey there everybody, Joe here. I'm at Flagstaff Medical Center. This mural behind me, I actually did uh, like, I don't know, several years ago, maybe four or five years ago, maybe more. And the colors have faded badly since. And so I'll just be repainting this same mural uh, as good as I can from memory. I mean, I'm not gonna follow the old template. It does make my job quite a bit easier though to paint over what's already there. I already have it laid out for me in the middle it's you know, all the focal point and everything so i just got to fill in some extra detail on the edges and that'll be fun because i get to apply some of my newer knowledge to update this mural so it's not every day that you get a chance to redo your old stuff i'm happy about this one you can see i'm in my official flagstaff medical uniform this is from uh, lindy lindy lou that came down from idaho to a workshop that's an event that they have every year there that troy days t-shirt she gave me this shirt, it's fun. I like getting gifts. I'm gonna get started on this mural and uh, see how much progress I can make before it starts raining. This is our rain season here in Flagstaff, Arizona. All right, I'm gonna get started. I've got a cocktail of paints down here. I'll show you real quick. Some Dunn Edwards, Sherwin Williams. Those are exterior acrylic paints. What I'm gonna do is paint some boulders that blend with this picture. So I'm gonna make this video about how to shape a rock. My method is gonna be to start simple and modify. Like this is what I always do. I, even if I'm just imagining, I imagine something simple and adjust it. Whether it's on the canvas or in my imagination, I'm starting simple and adjusting. I see every complex thing as an adjusted simple thing or a combination of many simple things. And that's, that's the way I see rock. So, so I'm just gonna walk you through my thought process as I do it. So I wanna put a boulder right in here. So I'll start by just throwing some black on there. All right, I'm gonna step back and look at that. Look at my rocks that I have just barely on the, you know, in the frame. I'm imagining rocks, you know, kind of sticking up this way. So, so I'm imagining my simple shape first. So all I'm gonna do is make a, a brown shade of black by adding red and yellow to this. I gotta not move too quick because I'm flinging these colors on a wall that's not supposed to be painted. You can make a grayish brown just by adding red and yellow or just adding orange to, to a black. Uh, adding red and yellow is not, you know, just like any two colors is not as intense as what a single pigment can be. So red and yellow is a little bit grayer of an orange than a, an orange pigment, but I, I don't need any bright colors. Red and yellow works great for mixing uh, with this black. So just for starters, um, putting up some red and yellow on this and then I'm going to add white to the top of it and I'm just thinking general oval shaped rock highlight the top all right so we're just going to put a big blob of white right there and you can see that white is kind of has a gray violet hue to it so I'm going to add yellow that's pretty typical for me to need to add yellow to highlights as things get brighter. Here. I'm not too worried about the exact color of this rock. You know, I'm more concerned about the relationship of colors within it, that it just looks like a believable rock. All right, before I go too far on it, I think it would do me good to have a little bit of a little bit of context in here. I want to put some background. So I want to put other rocks, so I'll put some black behind this guy here. Let's put some black there. And of course, these colors are going to change as I progress, but this will just help me to see my, my object for right now. Rock right there. And uh, I've got one kind of over here, so why don't I bring that in a little bit. This white that I'm using, this white is thick as mud. I mean, it's like acrylic out of the tube. All right, let's add a little bit of red and yellow to that one too. I'm just looking at this shape and just 
continuing that surface over, adding red and yellow so that it's a little more, a little more uh, orangish rather than just that kind of blue gray. I do this a lot, you know, with, with the brush where I just point the bristles at the wall. And, you know, it's not really pressure that, that gets paint applied to a textured surface. If you're ever trying to get paint on a textured surface, you know, moving quickly is valuable if you're trying to make money. The way to do it is lots of paint in the brush and not a lot of pressure because it lets the bristles stay straight and work into it. And believe me, I'm speaking from a lot of hours of experience. That pushing hard and going like this does not does not save time. It doesn't get it on quicker. So the way I'll do it is I'll dip my brush in the paint and that brush is real loaded. I'm rotating it like this. I don't dip it on the sides. I don't smack it on the sides of the container. I put it on with two motions, this side, that side. And sometimes I'll do multiple. I'll do multiple. Uh, brush loads like that and that's not the easiest thing ever to do that rotating thing that's something I've practiced a lot but it just lets me get more on the wall per brush load and then I spread it keeping my bristles at, at a good distance from the wall I, I don't push hard when I spread it and I don't let the bristles flick and release off of the wall so there is some a bit of motor skill practice in there keeping it on the wall this is stuff that, that I want to address in this uh, workshop that's coming up September 14th. September 14th, I'm gonna, gonna have a workshop right here in Flagstaff and talk about some application technique, you know, working with this fast drying paint. Things that have made my job easier. Okay. So I'm not worried about color. That doesn't match right now. That's okay. Uh, I'm just getting some basic shapes. I've got a shape here, so maybe I'll just carry a background over. And then I'll start adjusting this rock after I get that. So I'll put some black up here, get some red and yellow in there. Just keep the bristles extended. Oh, it's raining right now. It'll probably stop. See, it works that paint together. And the right amount of distance from the wall lets the bristles get into the texture and move it around. It's, it's all about being at the right distance and it allows me to go with this heavy stucco texture and be a lot more efficient with my time and application when I, you know, I'm trying to cover a few hundred square feet with a little paintbrush. So efficiency really matters. You'll see me kind of wiggle it and massage it like that, but I'm keeping that distance the same. It's as far as it can be without the bristles flicking off of the surface like that. It's a real bummer when you accidentally flick paint on somebody's property. <laughs> a nice car. <laughs> okay, so we have a few shapes laid out here. This is, this is a good start. Okay, let me put just a little bit in here. Well, let's decide whether or not it wants to pour. I mean, the sky does not, does not look like it wants to pour. I want to put something over my camera. Right now, I think we can agree that my, my oval-shaped rock right here does not look very natural. It looks like, you know, part of an Easter egg that's grayish brown. So I started with this simple oval shape and now I'll modify it. So one thing I can do to modify that I always do with rocks is, is I just, my, as if my brush were a chisel, I just break off edges. So I'm going to start by just breaking off an edge on this somewhere. I can do that just by taking a lighter color. I'll, I'll grab white and just make a distinct area that is a lighter color as if it's facing up and the light is hitting it. Now what I'm not going to do is make it even because that will suggest that it's this perfectly flat surface. So I'll, I'll make this shape you know, kind of correspond with, with the oval surface that it's cutting off. See, I curved it like this along the rock, but what I'm gonna do is make the tones different across this lighter color so that 
you know, it, it might be broken off, but it didn't have a perfectly clean, smooth break. So let me see if that is a good look. So I'm gonna add my orange, my red and yellow, and then grab some white. It's kind of pink. Let's get more yellow in there. Get my white. Now, like I said, I don't want it to be even, so I better grab some dark color. Make some down here. Black, yellow, red. And then I'll come up in here and maybe add just a little edge. Something I do a lot on rocks is add edges. Edges meaning like a little stair step, like it had layers that that broke. Like it broke along along the natural lines in the rock. So I can do that. And then, you know, I think it looks good if, like I said before, if I don't have everything the same value, so let's make this part brighter right here. That'll make this edge look real sharp. An extreme lightness, darkness difference. Makes that look like it's gonna curve up like that. Then we'll put a couple more light spots. No, I just don't want it to be even. Then another thing I'll do to make it look more natural is, is cut another spot. And I'll do a cut that goes through both of these, both of these edges. So uh, maybe now I'll, I'll come along here and just cut that side off right there. And I need to just change the color again. It's facing sideways, so typically that's gonna capture you know, some of the blue-green lights of the forest, if that's what my scene is. So I'm just gonna use gray. If I had kind of a, a combo of a greenish blue light hitting a grayish brown rock, it, it would just be gray. Rather than make this edge perfectly straight, why don't I just move it a little bit along the shapes that I already have. So I'll go this way, I'll go down on this one where that little stair step is, then over and then down like this. Just not so perfect. And then I'll take my dark color, grab a little bit more black, and maybe I can add a little bit of darker tones in here so that it looks like it's not all exactly the same. And then maybe up in here I can do it again. You know, I can cut across a couple edges. Make another light spot. And I'll grab my red and yellow on that one. It's way up on top. It's getting the most light. Just a, a thin little spot. Now to me that already looks more natural, but it can be better if I make it not so oval now. So I'll grab some some black and uh, we'll take this rock and cut in this way just a little bit. It doesn't take a lot of change to take away a perfectly oval look. Let me grab some of this one. This color here. And I'll go let me grab a little bit of my water that paint to flow a little bit easier. I'm just breaking up the edge a little bit. Right here I kind of have a natural edge there that I'll, I'll just put a little bit of a shadow under it. I was deciding whether or not to add to this or cut it off. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my, my sharp rock thing. And I'll take my 
background color that's got my red and my yellow and my black. I'll just cut it off even further. Let's cut off that little bit. Let's cut off this. Now to get these clean lines, I'm doing the same thing. Little bit of pressure. Just repetition over this texture with light pressure. I find to be the best way to get, to get in there. Now you can see that I did a little bit of a, just a slight bump out, a little bit of a stair step there. Now whenever I have a change in my outline, I can change the three-dimensional shape of it based on that. I'll show you what I mean. I'll get some of this white and yellow, red. Just make it my, my real light color that I did at the top there. The reason I'm mixing it over here is because I'm just going to do a skinny little spot of it. I don't have room to mix right here. See, and I'm, I'm just doing that because I saw this little stair going out. So I thought, well, hey, I might as well just make that look like it's not only on that edge, but going across the rock. So I'll highlight that too. Notice that I didn't highlight the entire thing exactly the same. Maybe I'll just do a few of those. Make this a little more visible while I've got this light color. All right, and then how about some pure black? Get a good shadow in this dark spot. I'll just I see a spot here that's already a little darker than the rest. Kind of going with my natural brush strokes. Now that looks much more like a natural rock. I want to have good depth in this picture and so I'll put surfaces that, that are not just facing me but surfaces that are going back. So this rock I'll put laying flat coming toward me like this. So, so to really get that effect, I'll put, put those a lot of these little kind of stair-step type layers in it. Now, I don't have this great plan right now for a shape of a rock. I just know that somewhere, somewhere this rock is gonna drop down. So I'm just putting black on, and I'm gonna see what happens if I just start blending the colors together. I'm not gonna get lucky. It's not gonna just look like a rock just by luck. You know, there is a method here. Like I said, I want this rock dropping down right here, so I'm putting shadow in this area, but I'm just gonna see if a particular brush stroke or shape that I see sparks my imagination a little bit to help me think of where I wanna go next with it. Now this is a good color, this medium tone right in here, this is a good color to make those layers in the rock. So I've got the surface kind of tilted, so I'll do the same, same kind of thing with, with these. Up here. Just make a few little. Now this could have layers tilting the other way too, but then It'd be hard for me to make those very visible. So this is strategic to, to really give a feel of perspective.
All right, so here I can see that this would look cool to have a gray edge facing this way. So again, I'm just putting a, a straight line, just making a section of color that suggests, you know, anytime I change the color, put lighter color, it says there's a light hitting a different, different angle. And so all I have to do is be mindful of the edges it's intersecting. It's intersecting right here, so I'll maybe just change the direction a little bit where it hits this, this line. And I'm doing these downward strokes. It naturally turns into black as it's moving this way. And then I'll just keep these strokes kind of moving with this edge. So I'll change direction every time I hit an edge like that. Well, that one I guess I don't need so much. right here. Let's make this not so it looks like petrified wood kind of there, but that's not, not the look I'm going for. Make this edge a little less, less straight. Put a shadow under that little edge. This is how I do it, little by little. Look at that big old goober on there. It'd be cool if I cast a shadow on this. I got the light coming this way, so I'll put a shadow on this rock. Right there, a little bit more, more red. I just gotta get kind of a sharpish edge on there. Now to get the color of that shadow just right, I just did a little bit of color math in my head. This, you know, orange rock plus blue sky equals gray violet. And then I just knew that black, red, and white makes a nice gray violet. Here's a little tip too. When you're doing cast shadows, always make them lighter than underside shadows of something. Because even though it's a cast shadow, it's just, it's just a dimmer light surrounded by brighter light. But the underside of something has more of an absence of light. You know, there's light in anything that you can see that's not just pitch black, but less light on the underside of something typically. I've got all this dark background so what I'm going to do is put an intermediate border around this. Uh, that is, I can probably just do it by grabbing this color. It'll just make it feel like this is bending back. Everything has a little bit of reflective quality to it. So if I just make it color that's kind of in between the light and the dark. It'll feel like it's more 3D and bending back around, reflecting the dark, dark background. Painting in the rain. Hopefully I'm not painting in the lightning. I know that if I put some brighter color here, it'll make the shadow effect look more realistic. 
like catching this edge of this rock a little bit more. that. 